Gordon. Mm, I don't get it. Hey guys, hello gorgeous. First of all, I wanted to thank everybody for all of the fantastic feedback to part one of my 80s Toy Museum virtual tour. Very happy to hear that a lot of you share the same feelings as I did in the 80s, going to the biggest toy store there was, Toys R Us. And uh, some of you just like me, like to go up and down the aisles and be immersed in plastic, colorful creativity. So that's very cool. More to come. I'll upload part two next week and more as the weeks go by. Uh, until then, I've got a couple more movie and uh, TV show reviews for you. I'm going to start off with a pilot that came out last year and I didn't get around to watching it until a couple weeks ago. It's for The Tick. Now, I never read The Tick comic. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about The Tick, The Tick was originally a comic book written by Ben Edlund and then it was adapted to a sat Saturday morning kids show called The Tick in the 90s and I found that completely by accident. I was channel surfing one day and I saw this big blue guy with uh, this heroic, traditional, old-fashioned voice and the writing on the show, just within the 30 seconds that I had, I had watched, it felt so different from any other uh, superhero animated show. X-Men was on at the same time and so uh, it was really cool to compare the two. And I thought The Tick was a lot like The Simpsons in that it, it seemed like it was a kid's show, but it was actually written for a more mature, uh, intelligent audience. And I was hooked right away. I thought it was hilarious. All, all of the little in-jokes, the side jokes, felt like sometimes there were more in-jokes uh, or jokes beneath the surface uh, than outright slapstick humor. And uh, the show ran three seasons, um, fantastic all the way through, and I was sad to see it go, but as with a lot of things, I had had my fill. Um, I don't believe in excess uh, in anything in life, um, and that applies to movies and TV as well, so I find myself a lot of the time just being satisfied when a show has run its course instead of wishing there was more. So as the years went by, if I had a tick itch, uh, that's kind of funny, um, I would just watch the old cartoons again or maybe try to hunt down some of the old comics. And uh, then they tried to revive The Tick with a live action show starring Patrick Warburton. And being the, the big Tick fan that I was, I checked it out and then uh, I, I checked in and then I checked out very quickly afterwards. Now, I'm not one of these people who, if they change anything, I'm out. Uh, I'm very open-minded when it comes to reimagining reboots of things that I'm a big fan of. I always go in with an open mind um, because I've tackled other people's creative uh, ideas as well and put my own spin on it too in my creative works. So I understand that as a, a creator, you need to have a little bit of room to put your own take on it, your own interpretation, but what is absolutely imperative is that you remain true to the original tone, the vibe, the heart. You can't change that. If you are given a project that is like The Tick, which is so big-hearted and just so heroic and sincere, uh, I watched a great video um, a couple days ago and I shared it on my Facebook page. Uh, first saw it uh, posted by my friend uh, Sherry Von Rock. Uh, thanks for that Sherry. But in the video they talk about the growth of bathos in TV and films today and how it, it, uh, it used to be that things would build up to a nice you know warm heartfelt scene and today it builds to that but it's like people are too embarrassed to feel anything genuine and sincere. And so they uh, mock it or they, they parody it because, uh, you know, they don't want to be made fun of for being true and genuine and actually caring about something. And uh, that video really clearly illustrates how the Marvel movies have gone from 
being sincere and genuine to just bathos, uh, self-parodying, parodying each other. And we've come to the point where sincerity is called cheese or, or being cheesy. And it's always been like that. The term cheesy has been around for decades, but I think now more than ever, I'm not that old a guy, but I've seen quite a change uh, in the way people behave. I think uh, now anything that is uh, remotely genuine or sincere or passionate or intense uh, can be just quickly dismissed as being cheese because society is growing so aloof apathetic, um, and all those other big words. So the Patrick Warburton show, I just couldn't get into it because even though he was a big blue guy and his, he had a buddy named Arthur, it, it felt like too much of a difference from the cartoon. I don't need an exact replica of the costume from the cartoon or the comic books, uh, but something a little closer than what Warburton wore would be nice. They opened up the whole face so you could see Patrick's whole face is eyes, uh, emoting and stuff. And I understand that in superhero movies, actors need to be able to emote, but I thought that was the wrong call with someone like The Tick. I think with The Tick, it's more body posture and voice than facial acting. Um, also, I didn't like that Warburton totally changed the character and he turned him into like this Southern guy instead of um, this old fashioned, um, basically Adam West Batman type of character. Um, so I, I didn't really like it. And the, and the jokes, um, weren't really landing with me either. They felt more dumb than clever and witty, like on the old cartoon. So it, for the people who love it, love it. And, uh, for the people who didn't, uh, walk on. And so I did. And, uh, a couple of years later, Ben Edlin became attached to one of my favorite shows ever. Um, it starts to get a little dusty every time I even think about this show. Firefly, such a beautiful show, wonderful show. And again, ran uh, one short season and I was satisfied. Um, I'm not one of the people who wish there was more. I'm just happy for what I got. Uh, and, and a lot of the time glad that things don't get diluted with more. But Ben Edlin has popped up again uh, with this new re-reboot of The Tick. And I had heard about it months ago, and I figured out I'll see it eventually. But since the live-action Warburton show didn't appeal to me, I thought, well, how much different could this one possibly be? I decided maybe The Tick was best left in the pages of comic books and in animated form. But uh, I did check it out, and I'm glad to say uh, I loved it. I'm quite surprised, and a lot of the time with a lot of these things, the less I know about them, the better. All I knew was that Peter Sarah Finowitz was playing the Tick, and that made me scratch my head because uh, I I need my Tick to be a big, burly, ginormous uh, character, but also really eloquently spoken. You know, like how would you combine the body of uh, Mr. Universe Arnold Schwarzenegger with the voice of Kelsey Grammer? Like it, it's going to be tough. Uh, to, to find someone who can pull that off. So uh, with this pilot, I thought Peter Serafinowicz uh, pulled off the character magically. What he lacks in physical stature, he more than made up for in the actual performance. Uh, I was very glad to see that he tried to mimic the voice from the cartoon rather than, uh, he's an Englishman, so uh, he wasn't trying to uh, add his own English take to it. Um, and just the, the childlike heart and soul that he brought to the character. Even though he's wearing a mask that covers up more of his face than Warburton did, I thought his character had so much more um, just warmness to him. And that's another problem with Patrick Warburton. Um, he was basically playing his character Putty from Seinfeld, who is a, a smartass, uh, got an edge to him. He's not exactly a nice, warm, fuzzy guy, whereas Sir Finowitz is playing the tick like the tick was on the cartoon. This, he's so childlike. He's got these big, bright eyes. He has such an innocence to him. And he doesn't have snide, smart aleck remarks. What's funny is that even when he's doing uh, something like narration, 
uh, voiceover and he sees something big and shiny. He go, he stops his um, narration. He gets distracted and he goes, neat, just like on the cartoon. So if you're a fan of Deadpool, there's some of that too, breaking the fourth wall in a way that's not, you know, eye rolling, but it is actually kind of funny. Uh, and I really appreciated that the character he is playing is basically Adam West's Batman cranked to 10. And now Adam West's Batman was cranked up too in terms of uh, all-American, traditional, goody-two-shoes, cookie-cutter, uh, yeah, Captain America-style heroes. And so the tick is is that and more. I thought the guy who played Arthur was fantastic as well. Uh, the thing that works so well about the tick is that you have this idiot. The tick is a complete imbecile, but he's ultra confident. And so that counts for a lot uh, in TV and movies and in real life. Even if you don't know what the hell you're doing, if you're 100% committed and believe in yourself, uh, it's worth a lot. And so you've got this great relationship with the tick who has this plan and uh, it might be a horrible plan, but he is 100% behind it. And he's dragging along this poor, hapless um, Arthur character saying, come on, we're going to fight crime. We're going to save the world. Now, in this show, unlike on the cartoon, Arthur is a little more prepared. Uh, he is more involved uh, and uh, emotionally invested in the battle against evil. Being a live action show, they decided to make it a well, I was going to say a little, but it's quite a bit more mature and violent than the cartoon was. But still somehow it works because at its core, it retains the, the goofy, silly tone of the cartoon. There are horrible things that happen in this show. Some people die horrifically. Uh, Arthur endures uh, a really tragic loss. But the way they do it is... And it's very difficult. I'm, I'm not saying that it's an easy thing to do. And that's why I really applaud the people who made this pilot. Because uh, they pulled it off and not many people could. I think Ben Edlund's style of humor is so flippant um, that he can take these terrible situations and just... He makes you chuckle even though you know you shouldn't be chuckling. It's the type of stifled laugh. He's not going for belly laughs and knee slapping. He's uh, going for the type of laugh where you go... Oh, oh God, I shouldn't be laughing at this. So, um, and another reason why the bad things that are happening in the show work is because the villain isn't a mustache twirling villain. He is an asshole. Yes, he's evil. Yes, he kills people. Yes, he's ruthless. The terror did appear on the cartoon and he was a decrepit old man by that point, but he really reminded me a lot of Cobra Commander uh, from G.I. Joe. So they haven't changed him too much in this show other than allowing him to brutally kill people. But in the midst of those horrific acts that he's doing, he still finds the time to be an asshole, to do little things that are so mean-spirited. The thing that's funny about the terror is that while he's doing these terrible, horrible things that are a 10 on the horror chart, He's also finding time to do these little ones, these insignificant little little asshole things like uh, like bugging Arthur in the midst of the worst moment of Arthur's life. And it's kind of like Bathos in that it takes it from this horrific thing uh, and instead of calling him this brutal, heartless murderer, you're calling him an asshole and a douchebag. Oh, what a what a jerk! <laughs> so, in the Marvel movies, uh, superhero movies, other action movies, Bathos is really killing it for me. Uh, in the Tick, it works though because they are now getting to do things that are so much more horrible and violent than they were allowed to do on on a kids show. But then they diminish it and they reduce the emotional impact, the scarring of these horrible things by slipping in that little joke there. Uh, for something like this, I think Bathos works great. And, and in, sometimes it almost feels like the reverse of Bathos in the show, because in the uh, Marvel movies and other action movies, 
it seems like a lot of the time they build and build and build towards a sincere moment and then they make fun of it and pff, uh, they just turn it into a joke and make it meaningless. Whereas in The Tick, it seems like they build jokes and they build jokes and sometimes they build to a, a sincere moment. They, they, they used to do that on uh, The Office as well, which was like a, a great, funny, silly comedy. And, and sometimes they'd have those what I call Michael Scott moments where you thought they were building to a joke, but they built to a really heartfelt, genuine moment, which is why you fall in love with this lovable idiot like Michael Scott after a couple seasons, even though he's an incredibly annoying and appropriate character. And I think that's going to happen with The Tick as well. Um, and maybe even some of the other characters on The Tick that you shouldn't love, like The Terror, uh, that they're building and building towards something that you don't think is going to be deep, meaningful. Uh, and then the payoff is that, yeah, guys like The Tick on the show, even though he appears... Uh, a little goofy, a little silly. Some might even say out of his mind, insane, like on the old cartoon. Uh, he's harmless and he has a heart of gold. So if you're an old time Tick fan, rest assured, this is not a uh, complete butchering of your beloved franchise. They didn't Michael Bay it. Uh, there is some darkness in it. Everything's got to be dark and gritty today, but I'm happy to say that from my perspective, at least, uh, this did retain the the tone, the mood, the heart and soul of the old cartoon. And the good news is, if you liked it, the show has been picked up by Amazon, so they're going to be dropping a couple episodes in August, and then a couple more early next year. Got something to say about the ticks? Scroll down and go to town. And to join the nerd tribe, hit subscribe. Spoon! Spoon!